Uh, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here with you today uh, to come to you to discuss uh, recovering from the pandemic, how transit agencies move forward to a new normal. And for us at the Jacksonville Transportation Authority, we looked at as at this as our post COVID-19 strategic action plan. Um, this was an effort that our CEO, Nathaniel Ford Sr. asked us to look into um, as early as June of last year, um, thinking at that point that we were going to come out of the pandemic in a relatively short amount of time, not realizing that it would that here we are in 2021 and we still are uh, recovering from it. But it gave us an opportunity to start putting our our thinking together of the services and the opportunities that we've had of have upon us in the at, at this agency to move forward. So I definitely wanted to share that context with you. Before I get started, let me share with you a little bit about the Jacksonville Transportation Authority. Um, we are situated in Northeast Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, a mid-size transit agency at about uh, 800 employees. We not only run fixed services, uh, fixed transit services, fixed route services, uh, but we also do paratransit and we do um, on-demand services in particular areas of the city. But we are also not just a transit authority, we are also a transportation agency because in the in our capital programming department, we also do roadways and bridges and highway construction design and construction of those elements, as well as all of the state of good repair for the property. So we are truly a multimodal agency. So this opportunity gave, gave us uh, an idea of what we wanted to be as far as our transportation authority when we ended up at the end of this pandemic. So let me tell you about this move plan. Again, Mr. Ford came to his executive leadership team and asked, how are we going to recover from this move plan? not just as far as the authority was concerned, but also for our community and for the city of Jacksonville. We were given this charge to pretty much lay out an action plan uh, that would provide guidance for the JTA on what decisions as well as what strategic actions needed to occur over an 18 month period. Um, at the same time, this plan would be the kickoff to our five year strategic effort. Um, we were coming upon our strategic plan and redoing our strategic plan, our five year strategic plan, because our previous plan, the Blueprint for Transportation Excellence, and its five year period that would end in 2022, we had completed all projects and initiatives uh, before 2020. So it was now time for us to start looking forward for the next five years. But at the same time, this was the pandemic pre presented um, us with an opportunity to reach out to industry experts to really engage our community, not just transportation experts, but also health experts and business experts and really get a sense from everyone as far as what can we expect over the next 18 months as everyone was recovering from the pandemic, but also what were you what would you be looking for in a transit authority transportation authority to best serve the needs of the community and so that was the charge that was given to us by mr ford and so we went forward with the move plan mobility optimization through vision and excellence and we said that this would be the phase one of our strategic planning efforts coming out with that strategic actions that we could move right into the development of our five year strategic plan. So with the move plan, the phase one report, we were able to in this process review what our current operations and services were, but also look at the challenges and opportunities to the authority and then 
most importantly, we wanted to know what triggers, what triggers would actually occur um, in, in the environment that would tell us, JTA, you now need to pivot in response of that trigger or to be proactive to the series of triggers that would follow. That meant for us, we would do scenario planning. So this effort did include a scenario planning exercise that I will share with you later on in our presentation this morning. What the outcome of this is we have a literal roadmap that we're using and we're barking upon that really will help us throughout this fiscal year of 2021, but also into early 2022 uh, to help us to be able to recover not just us, but also our community uh, from this pandemic. So when it came to the plan, I mentioned earlier that we looked at or actually engaged the experts, industry experts that really help us to identify what the trends would be that we needed to look at and we needed to consider in the developing and the development of strategic actions. And so we interviewed um, uh, several uh, industry experts, transportation experts. We we went to APTA, we interviewed Paul Scatellis and many members of various committees. Uh, we also interviewed several thought leaders when it came to mobility. What were they seeing? What were they hearing? And what guidance could they give us as far as the JTA and areas we should be looking at? Uh, we also wanted to make sure that this was a this would be a plan that we would use and not something, a study that would just go on the shelf. So everybody was engaged in this particular plan. So not only did we interview members of the executive leadership team, including our CEO, Nathaniel Ford, but we include, we interviewed several of our senior leaders and middle managers to really understand what they were doing in their current services and where they saw the agency should be pivoting to in response uh, to the pandemic or being proactive ahead of things that may be occurring. We even spoke with our frontline employees, our bus operators, our customer service uh, representatives, and our ticket window uh, personnel. We had focus group interviews with them to also get their feedback. What things were they seeing that we needed to consider in this 18 month roadmap. And then we went to our customers. We did customer surveys of our fixed route service, our ferry service, and our paratransit services. Some of the trends that we saw that we wanted to make sure that we included in this discussion, uh, mobility management, mobility as a service. Those were things that were popping up that we were told by many of the experts that we should be considering. Um, what's the core function of our transit? Uh, one of the, I think for everybody, we realized that transit ended up being a core service and essential function during a pandemic because essential workers relied heavily on transit services and the JTA in Jacksonville was no different. We found that the majority, most of our riders uh, that remained with the service in the height of the pandemic were those essential workers. So it asked us, what should we be looking at as our core function? And more importantly, how should we measure that? Real-time information. Real-time information was key because not only did our essential customers wanted to know when their buses would arrive at their stops, uh, now they wanted to know more information about the bus, the capacity of, of the bus, crowding on the bus. And so industry experts told us that that's the information we needed to start focusing and targeting on being able to branch out and give to our customers. I mentioned earlier, but let me go into a little bit more detail. We realized that for us to consider over this 18 month period, what are the conditions that were under our control and conditions outside of our control that we needed to undergo a scenario planning exercise? And this is the framework that we use that's right before you all. We wanted to look at three time frames of recovery, uh, what would happen over a six month period, a 15 month period, and then anything outside of 15 months. But we also wanted to look at different drivers, things that would be outside our control. 
what would happen with the pandemic? Would we recover soon because of the availability of vaccines? Or would this be a long lengthy process to getting most of the, most of the area vaccinated? Uh, the economic recovery and the political context. So we wanted to get a sense of where we're seeing that because of the pandemic, uh, we were going to have a lengthy economic recovery when it came to the city or even the region. And how would that inflect, reflect employees in the area, which thus would reflect our ridership, those we are actually bringing these services to, or will we see something quicker? And then local conditions, what was occurring in our downtown area or in the employment centers where now most per, most employees were working from home and not in their facilities because that impacts us in the services we provide. But then when we saw that in many of those uh, employment clusters, what were we now seeing in many of the neighborhood communities and areas around the neighborhood? Would that now be a focus for us to look at? So those were the three drivers that we saw were outside of our control, but then we wanted to look at triggers. One of the things Mr. Ford asked us as the senior leadership team, as well as the entire senior uh, directors in the authority was when things happen, do we need to now pivot and maybe pivot our direction of our roadmap to now consider something else? And so with that being said, we came up with three really um, time frames of which to consider rapid rebound that we would see not only a rapid rebound in the recovery uh, of the pandemic, but also the economy and even in our downtown area. Moderate momentum. We may see some distribution of the vaccines, but it would not have a wide distribution among the population. So it may be a little slower getting everyone vaccinated and people back to work and back to the normal we all think of as normal. Maybe a maybe a, a longer period of time for economic recovery, but the focus was still on the suburban areas and less on the employment centers. And then the lingering lifestyle. In other words, we're going to be in the thick of things in 2021, and we still would not see any recovery of any sort uh, for an extended period of time. So we wanted to look at in these three buckets what would be our action plans or our particular strategic actions that we would embark upon and triggers for us to say, let's, let's reshift this focus, let's reshift this roadmap. So what you see now are here are the, the triggers we said that we would do um, under each of these three different scenarios. If there was a rapid rebound, then we're gonna focus on our customers. We're gonna focus and become an integral part uh, of distributing the vaccine to our community. And then we would provide different mobility options to serve our essential customers, our core customers. If we ended up in a moderate momentum, then we as an authority would focus on cost efficiencies internally, and then how could we support our essential workers uh, in ways that went really expanded beyond the current services that we provided? Are there different types of services we need to consider? And then we would actually move forward to prioritizing neighborhood circulators in many of the suburban areas. And then if this would end up in a lingering lifestyle period, then our focus needed to be on the vulnerable populations in the underserved areas. And then for the authority, look at ways that we could actually utilize uh, private consultant services, not just bringing them in for the authority, but how we could actually go out and provide some additional sources of revenue to help keep the authority moving forward. Out of the plan, we came up with three key themes after we came out of the scenario exercise. Those three themes are before you, know your core, build on your strengths, and collaborate for success. Know your core. So for us, know our core mean, meant that we needed to know our core customers. So we would focus on strategic actions that would address our customers' needs. Uh, this is where equity would come in, especially as we were going through a period of time as we were embarking upon the study uh, with the social unrest in the, in, throughout the world, I would say. 
we felt that this was an opportunity for us to look at reimagined services and keep that equity lens upon us. So with this particular roadmap, before I get into the roadmap, I wanna share with you how we actually looked at this in the plan that we would have a roadmap over strategic actions that we would actually embark upon in a nine month, 15 month, 18 month time frame. Those actions would take us into new directions. However, based off of our scenario planning, if we had any one of those uh, scenarios to occur, rapid rebound, moderate momentum, or lingering lifestyle, then we would take a pivot and start looking at different strategic actions to get us to the same end point. And then once we got to the end, what additional uh, studies that we needed to do or additional research we needed to do, or if we needed to broaden any one of these programs, pilots, or initiatives, we would take that into further consideration as we developed our five-year strategic plan. So for Know Your Core, the new directions that we would end up in were that we would reimagine our transit services. A little different than our route, route optimization that the JTA provide, performed in 2014, we would look at where our route certainly cur served our core customers and see if we needed to reimagine the services that we provide. Right now, many of our services are what you, I would say is our your typical hub with a spoke with regards to our fixed route services. And the question for us came up is, this is an opportunity to consider more uh, regional hubs and providing services regionally to different neighborhoods that were really focused on what our core customers needed. Where were they going? Where did they need a services to? If they were coming across Jacksonville, were they, were, did we still, still wanted to bring them to the center, to downtown in order to make a transfer, or were there other transfer opportunities we needed to embark upon? Those were the things that we wanted to look at in reimagining our transit services. And then also revisiting our core metrics. Ridership is the principal core that many of us use to determine uh, the base of our transit services and how well we are doing. Is this the time to look at something else? Maybe measure the accessibility to the jobs or maybe the services that we're providing with those who have restricted mobility choices. Here was an opportunity for us to really look at that. The tactical actions for us over the next 18 months, begin the new route reimagination study, address customer safety through continued cleaning and even vehicle air purification upgrades, develop pilots, mobility pilots um, in particular areas, especially in the suburban area around more of the locations where we saw people working at home more, so they're accessing more neighborhood services there. Maybe it's time for us to do a pilot in one of those areas. And then upgrading, improving, enhancing our real-time customer information to provide information more about the vehicle capacity itself. Is it crowded? Is there, num is there space for me to jump on this bus once it reaches my stop? We wanted to do that as well as be able to provide more information on on time performance uh, to really help our core customers get where they needed to go on our services. So here's the roadmap that reflects uh, things that I just spoke about. Notice that based off of the different scenarios, depending where we end up uh, are the focuses that we're going to have uh, during this period of time. So, for example, in moderate momentum, we've seen some distribution of vaccine, but hasn't reached the full population. So here's our opportunity to uh, focus more and optimize our paratransit services and then really look at, they call it incentivizing the lower peak period of fixed route demand, or in other words, peak spreading. Uh, and see if there's ways that we can spread the peaks out with our transit services to promote more of a, uh, uh, transit services being provided, more frequency of the services during the day to meet the needs of our core customers. And one of the pilots that was recommended to us was that 
we focus on the south side area of Jacksonville. It has come up to be one of the major employment hubs, um, but also one of the major retail centers in the Jacksonville area and focus on putting a, a mobility hub in this area to where we could have bus service, fixed route service, micro mobility services actually serve in that area to really meet the needs of our core customers, those essential workers who still needed to get to their job, as opposed to having many of our customers going all the way downtown to make a transfer to come out to the south side area. You can see on this map, the, just the differences in the time periods and why this area was a, foc a focal point for us for a mobility pilot. The second theme, build on your strength. Lead the region in mobility management. So for the Jacksonville Transportation Authority, we, we value as one of our strengths being that we wanted to actually serve uh, many of our partners in the region, many of the counties. So that was this core, this, this particular theme. And so for us, we wanted to develop a regional vision for mobility management and areas that you see here on the screen and really become the go-to mobility provider in Northeast Florida. Those tactical actions under this particular theme would be that we'd actually would work with uh, many of our partners in the regions, many of the counties surrounding uh, the city of Jacksonville, Duval County. We wanted to see what goals externally that and internally that we wanted to prepare before we actually went and engage our county partners. The biggest thing we saw as a support during this period of time would be working with our county partners as well as our Northeast Florida Transportation um, TPO to develop guaranteed ride homes. I know this is something that some of the major um, cities, urban cities around the country, they're already doing. We would want to bring that to Jacksonville. So if we had a core user who would use our services during the day, but actually needed to use services outside of our own service hours, as opposed to us expanding our service hours, to stand up a guaranteed ride home system that would guarantee our customers to be able to get home. We also looked at for internally for us would be cross training of many of our employees to be able to provide those mobility services. And so here's the roadmap for building on our own strengths and being that mobility manager uh, for, for the JTA and for the city of downtown. One example here, one pilot that we will be engaging in is standing up a, a micro mobility pilot of electric scooter, scooters at Edward Waters College. Uh, that's our historically black college here in Jacksonville, and it sits within a success zone, a new town success zone. So since we've had our core customers in this area, since we've had a university, a college there, uh, we thought that would be the right location to expand upon micro mobility. Um, being as that integrator to our fixed route services and standing up an e-scooter pallet at that location. Then that brings me to our third key uh, theme, collaborate for success. Become a strong regional capital development partner and engage partners for transit innovation. So for us, where we want to head with this as far as our new directions, is we've already established regional transit service with many of the counties around Jacksonville. Let's expand that to even provide capital programming and program management services for these counties as well. The city of Jacksonville in collaboration with our Northeast Florida TPO has already looked to become a smart region. So we want to partner with them. We've already partnered with them and being a signatory to becoming a smart region, but we want to help implement smart technologies outside of uh, the JTAs on smart technologies, but smart technologies across the board to promote a benefit for the entire region. Um, we also want to make sure that in not only our roadway projects that we do, but the projects that our city and the state does that we're we're collaborating together to provide to construct, design and construct safe and smart 
sustainable streets. So for us, tactical actions, uh, look at how we could play an integral part when it came to the vaccine distribution in Jacksonville. Holding a regional capital infrastructure summit with all of our regional partners to talk about how we could collaborate over the next 18 months to be able to not only build and construct um, how we can help one another doing to do so, how we can actually engage one another when it came to that collaboration, whether it was utility coordination or permitting, but also looking at ways that we can come together to see how we can use infrastructure as the way to recover the economy quicker, actually promote economy growth, economic growth here in the Northeast Florida region. So the first pilot that we would do would be this vaccine distribution initiative. In other words, how can we help promote that, dis uh, that equitable distribution of the vaccine in the Florida area um, to help us move towards a quicker recovery here in Northeast Florida? And so with this would also be something that I know many of you have thought about as well. How do we make sure our own essential employees, our frontline workers, moved up and was considered as valuable and considered to get their vaccine at first and foremost. This was something that we wanted to make sure that we definitely helped. We did not want transportation to be a barrier or transportation access to be a barrier to anyone receiving the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine. And this was the first pilot, I would say, out of the study that we decided to embark upon, embark, embark upon, excuse me, um, to real, because we saw this served equity, but it was a, a community need. And so for the JTA, that's exactly what we did. We, as soon as we finished the study, we went into planning on how we can help and be prepared to help the city and the state distribute the vaccine in the Jacksonville area. So we rerouted uh, many of our fixed route services so that one of the stops would be the front door to any local or state ran vaccination area vaccination sites. Uh, we worked with many of the nonprofits uh, to stand up shuttle services to actually take seniors from their locations to uh, vaccination sites. We actually did branded marketing to where we said to everyone, especially seniors, 65 and older, and those who are uh, disabled, that you will ride free on our buses and our services, whether it was paratransit or our on-demand services to a vaccine site. And then most importantly, which we we're really excited about, we actually retrofitted two buses, two surplus buses, and we actually made them mobile vaccine units. We partnered with a local community health organization, Agape Health here in Jacksonville, and they provided the vaccines and the medical support. We provided the vehicles and they actually take this vehicle to all of the senior housing locations in Jacksonville uh, to make sure that our seniors in the city are vaccinated, especially for those who were homebound and could not get to a vaccination site. We are now um, bringing the vaccine to them. And so that's a part of the equity lens as part of serving the community and it's promoting ridership, we feel, by being able to do this. So here's our roadmap for collaborating for success. Now the partnership that we're looking to do is seeing how we could use our autonomous vehicle network to really collaborate with healthcare. In other words, we've already had the wellness on wheels I just shared with you, but we also have an autonomous vehicle network. The JTA is actually looking to bring on an autonomous vehicle fleet in Jacksonville. We already have some vehicles right now that we're using in our test and learn facility. We're looking to see how we can use some of the autonomous vehicle fleet to serve as a neighborhood circulator with uh, not only our senior areas and take them directly to medical facilities, uh, not just for the vaccine, but also just for healthcare in general. And then we can't do any of this without looking at ourselves internally. 
So the recommendations from this move plan actually told us that we needed to look at our own organizational structure. Were there any things that we needed to pivot to or refine as we looked at how the JTA would actually move over the next 18 months? A couple of things that you see here, we wanted to strengthen our succession planning, but we wanted to make sure that at this time, especially when our frontline employees were still out and still moving strong for us and still moving people and services and our administrative employees were working from home. We wanted to create opportunities to still bring everyone together and strengthen those bonds and those that cohesiveness so that when we all return to whatever we would do at the end of this, that we were still we were a stronger, a stronger organization. And then we wanted to make sure for our operators who were still working day in and day out throughout this entire pandemic that we took an opportunity to make sure that we bolstered them, that we provided them with the training and incentives that they need so they could come out stronger as a result of this pandemic. And so that's where we ended up uh, with the three themes. We have our roadmaps. We've already embarked upon several of the things that I've shared with you today, and we're actually moving next forward to uh, our five-year strategic plan. We actually will be procuring that very shortly and getting started with that in the new fiscal year. But now we know we have an 18-month plan. We've already pivoted to see some things occur in Jacksonville, moving us from a moderate momentum into almost a rapid rebound. So as we are actually transitioning, as we're seeing this in our environment, the JTA is using that to stand up quickly. Uh, many of the pilots that I've shared with you earlier and the continue moving forward uh, with the things that we are doing. So that completes my presentation. I would be remiss if I did not uh, also thank the consultant team that worked with us on this particular effort. We had Michael Baker International and Sincar Consulting Group uh, actually work with us on this and we had several different uh, industry experts on this. And uh, in behalf of Mr. Ford and the entire executive leadership team at JTA, I thank them all for their efforts to help us to be able to set up, to be able to have this roadmap that we can use. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much, Greer. Um, 